Hey guys, so today I have an update on the TurboGrafx CD that I got in an untested lot about a month ago, which I made a video about it when I got it. So I also bought a gear for it because that's apparently one of the biggest issues with this console is the gear degrades over time so it stops spinning so we're gonna be replacing it and seeing if i could get it working again all right let's go i got the console open what i what i bought today was this gear because supposedly that could be one of the issues and when i looked at the inside of this a few weeks ago i saw that my gear looked a bit chipped I don't know if you can see the gear but there's a yellow gear that gets worn out over time and chips I'll show a picture of mine in a bit uh, or I'll record it in a bit but yeah I'm gonna be replacing that on mine and seeing if maybe it'll read discs after I do that I also ordered a power adapter for it which should be coming in a few days at the time of this recording all right, not sure if you guys can see that here, but this is the, see that yellow gear there is what I'm trying to replace. But if you look at the top, it looks a little chipped. When I take it out, I'll show you what I mean in full, but this is the best I can show you right now. So first I got to take a washer off with something. Seems simple enough. And then I could take the gear off and put the new one on. Alright, so I'm going to be doing that. But first, when you, when you open the system, if you ever want to try to open it yourself, you got to take two ribbon cables out. You just pull this white part out and then pull out the ribbon cable as you see there. And this other one on the other side. I'm not sure if you can see that one. It's Kind, it's kind of a wrinkled one, but yeah, see, there's a white part there. Yeah, you just try to lift that up carefully, the white part that holds the ribbon cable in, and then you pull out the ribbon cable. It's that simple. It's all right, I'm going to take the gear off. Yeah, as you can see, this is what the the gear, my gear looks like. See, it's pretty chipped up, so it looks like this is the reason why it wasn't spinning or reading any discs. So I'm going to be putting the new one on. I'll show you what that looks like. Let me just take it out the bag. Alright, so... I put the new gear and washer on. So now I'm going to close it back up. Now, well, first I got to find the old washer because it fell inside here. Because it's very small. But I took it out with this here, these tweezers. So just had to get in between the washer and the gear itself and pull it off. But yeah, that's the new gear. They actually gave me two, so I'll, I'll show you what the other new gear was like. Here it is here, which is good. If I ever need to replace it again, I'll have this. And they gave a bunch of washers because they they will get lost very easily. Well, anyway, I'm going to close it all back up, and we're going to try plugging it in, so... Let's go. All right, so I got it all closed back up. I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna just test it with this copy of Monster Layer that I have, which came in that untested lot as well. Which the disc does work. I put it in a computer and it reads fine. But yeah, so I'm going to plug it in. Since I can only plug this in at the moment, I'm only going to try this unit. So I wait for the... See, it turns on. 
when I get the the base unit power cable, which should be coming soon, I'll, I'll be testing that out. Get the, the disc out. One thing I find a bit annoying about this is that the disc doesn't sit very firmly on top of the into the Turbo Graphics CD. It feels like it's still loose. It's not like a later CD system like the PlayStation or something where it sits tightly. But this was one of the first CD-based game consoles, so I'll excuse it for that. But yeah, I'm going to turn it on. Oh, and you see it's spinning now. I think I got it working. Showing track one. Let me plug some headphones in and see if if it plays. All right, I got some headphones now. I'm gonna see if I can hear any sound coming from it since you can use this to just listen to music from it when it's not plugged into a TurboGrafx-16. See it. Not sure if you guys could hear that, but I'm hearing the audio right now. Yep. Hearing all the, the music from the game. have headphones on so it kind of sounds crappy. I'll see if I can plug it into a sound system real quick. Alright, so I have this audio cable plugged in to the side. I have it plugged into my DVD recorder and it's on the TV. We're gonna see if it plays the sound so you can hear it clear. Buzzing sound. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh, okay, now now I hear the game sound. Yeah, as you can hear, the the sound of the Turbo CD, actually it's sounding pretty good right now. I'm really glad that I got this working because the price I paid for the lot, the whole untested lot that I bought with all those games and the Turbo Graphics 16, it cost, it cost less than what a Turbo CD by itself goes for which is pretty pretty mind-blowing oh and the base which you can't forget about that on its own so yeah I'm, overall i'm glad to have got this working now when the power adapter comes we're going to be seeing if the base works so stay tuned for that all right so today i got the power adapter for the TurboGrafx CD base unit, which I got it from a site called Retro Game Cave. They sell aftermarket ones, so I got one of those, because an official one, not sure if I mentioned this, but an official AC adapter for the Turbo CD base is very rare, and if you do find them, they're typically over almost 80 bucks or more, so yeah. But anyway, I'm glad I got something to turn this on with. 
gonna be putting in monster layer just like I tested with the CD unit on its own. I'm gonna be putting that in. I'm be turning it on and making sure it works. All right. Here goes. All right, so I got the turbo CD on. It's working great. Just loading the boot ROM, which yeah, I'm not paying $300 for a real copy, so I'm loading it on a never drive. And here we have Monster Lair working, which it's also called Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair, which was on the Mega Drive only in Japan and Europe. Here, the TurboGrafx-16 version was the only console release. And I have that here. I'm going to be playing it for a bit. And it's a pretty fun game. I didn't I never really played this version of it, but I have the Mega Drive version. And I like the colors on this one better. And the music sounds a lot more tropical and more upbeat on this version cuz it's CD audio. So it's higher quality. But yeah, it's a pretty fun game. It's a little challenging at times, but it's a pretty fun arcade style game, as it was originally an arcade game. I don't know why this version, though, they dropped the Wonder Boy name, but I think it had something to do with Hudson Soft. But they did that with all the Wonder Boy games on the TurboGrafx-16, at least in the U.S. Because there were a few of them. I know Wonder Boy 3 and Dragon's Trap was also on there, but it was renamed Dragon's Curse. I think this is the only other Wonder Boy game that was more like the first game. Because all the other ones, they were more action-adventure based with RPG elements. So yeah, this one is more arcade style. I really like how this game has shoot 'em up sections like after each first half of the of the stage, like the first half of each stage is just platforming. This one, the second half of every stage is a shooter section. I like how they just switch up the gameplay like that. You get different weapons. Kinda sucking right now, but whatever. Just want to show that this works. I'm really excited. Especially at the deal that I got on it. Even though I had a buy a gear to fix it, but I got it working. It's all that matters to me in the end of the day. One thing I notice is that the bosses of this version seem a lot harder. They shoot more, and their projectiles, they go a little more randomly of this version too. You could actually shoot the fruit to make it bigger and you get more health out of it. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing for a little bit longer. And yeah, just show the Turbo CD in action, which is pretty cool. Never really played this or much Turbo Graphics 16 before, so it's always nice to have a new, unique experience. What I also like about the Turbo Graphics CD is that it it's region free. You can play Japanese games on it without a problem. 
The only thing is, you need the system card for it to run, which, as you saw, I have it on an EverDrive. Because the real Super System card is like 300 bucks if you can find it on eBay. And the cards are region locked, so you can't just get a Japanese one, which is cheaper. Yeah. At least I can actually play the game, though, and try more stuff out on this. That's pretty cool.
So yeah, as always, more to come. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Bye now.